was a hole in the main Wind and the tides were my command Sick of my fortune far from land Sick of my fortune far The wild Pacific salmon is the foundation of British Columbia's coast, fueling some of the richest waters in the world. In what seems to be a perfect cycle, the annual return of the salmon has supported both ecosystems and economies for thousands of years. Recently, a new type of fish has been introduced to these waters, the farmed raised salmon. With the lifting of a seven-year moratorium in 2002, Open pen salmon aquaculture is expanding in British Columbia. Some are calling fish farming the investment opportunity of the future. Others maintain that the farms are seriously harming the wild stocks. Today, over 100 farms operate in British Columbia. Most of them are located in the waters surrounding Vancouver Island, but plans to expand north have been laid. One area in development is near Prince Rupert, where there are no fish farms yet. 18 new farm sites have been proposed for this area. These northern waters are among the richest in the world. The Skeena River alone is home to Canada's second largest commercial run of wild salmon. No one knows exactly what effects the farms will have. For many people here, whose way of life and livelihood depends upon the health of the marine environment, there are many questions that remain unanswered. Prince Rupert City Council uh, has, uh, has endorsed uh, aquaculture, per particularly fin fish aquaculture, as a uh, legitimate enterprise for the North Coast. Uh, we see it uh, providing a lot of employment in the Prince Rupert area, and it also parallels well with the marine history of the people of this area. They are uh, tenders of the, of the ocean. My name is Norman Ostrom. I'm, uh I got no grass growing under my feet, let me tell you. <laughs> nope. We should not have fish farms on this coast because we don't need it. We got the wild stocks here. There's, uh, you know, like salmon fishermen, there's you know, halibut fishermen, cod fishermen, prawn fishermen, shrimp fishermen from sole flounders and good crabs, and gray cod, and lots of herring. And, you know, we, we got everything. So what, what more can you ask for? <laughs> We're really blessed in a lot of countries, they, they don't have these things. And it's just a natural resource here, so why, why wreck it? There's nowhere in the world where wild stocks of any sort of salmon and farm salmon have actually cohabited and coexisted in, a, in a, an harmonious way. That, that's just not been the case anywhere in the world. And there's no one that can point at any issue and say, here, it's worked well. It hasn't. I mean, without the fish, we can't do anything. And there's a lot of different people that are using this resource. The importance of, of uh, these charter operations in a, in a small community like this, you can't even put a value on it in the sense that it's keeping a community like this alive. Without the people that are doing and operating these small businesses, your community is going to die. A lot of my clients come here because they know that this is like the last frontier. It's, uh, it's a great place to go fishing. You know, they're, uh, they're coming here for good reason, and their good reason is that there's big bloody fish around here. The Simchian First Nation is divided over the issue of the introduction of farms to the North Coast. Out of seven different tribal councils, one has signed an agreement with a salmon farming company, allowing for 60 years of operation in their territorial waters. The Department of Fisheries has no interest of trying to preserve the wild salmon. We don't see any, any hope down the road uh, for, for, or any commitment from the Department of Fisheries to ensure that they will be in existence in the future. So we're meeting another challenge of chains. We're adapting to the monetary uh, system. We've written letters to Ottawa, we've written letters to Vancouver, environmental people, 
telling them how how we really don't want to see that happen in our country. One of the main reasons is because uh, Almighty Sockeye is so beautiful and tasteful that many generations in this community has been brought up on that sockeye. We were told by our elders years ago, never let the almighty dollar fool you because that's what's going to happen. The waters of the great Skeena and Nass rivers stretch hundreds of kilometers inland, carrying fish from the ocean to the doorsteps of interior communities many of which are still sustained by their traditional foods. We're in uh, Fishery Bay. And this one here is a place where we all come together every year to make olig and grease, to get our food. Uh, like, like we always say, you know, this is one of the richest rivers around. It gives us everything. And that's one of the things we're trying to do, is we're trying to look after it so that we are future future children will have something to you know, rely on. Yeah, you never starve in the river because uh, whenever you're hungry, you just go out the back door and you get whatever you need. It's like a big cycle. Like, it's just something that our, our forefathers did before us. Eh? And so just keep tradition alive and just keep going. This food source is so rich. We jar spring salmon, we jar sockeye, we jar coho. It just amazes me that um, we're able to feed all these people. It does help a lot of people get through the winter. I know a lot of my family members eat a lot of fish as well and, and in some cases it's not because they like to, it's because they more or less have to because there's no money. It is very, it is very healthy food source, right? You eat one whole jar of salmon for lunch. <laughs> A commonly held belief exists that BC's wild salmon are on their way out and that salmon aquaculture is needed to economically replace them. However, with the exception of some localized salmon runs, overall wild salmon stocks are still strong in BC especially on the north coast. In 2001, wild fisheries in BC provided work for over 13,000 people. Salmon aquaculture employed around 2,000. I've been fishing in the commercial industry for about 13 years and I've worked at the fish farms for about two years, maybe two years, and I didn't really like it. Well, when I was working on the farms, picking up dead carcasses, because this was my first time, I didn't have any gloves. And one guy just grabbed me and says, you gotta, you gotta wear these gloves or your hands will deteriorate or something like that. It was gross because I got a little bit on me and I had to wipe it off right away because they had this chemical solution. If you touch the fish with bare hands, your, your hands are gonna be intoxicated with some kind of chemicals that they're giving the salmon. You know, if you can't handle a fish, why don't we just keep the keep our tradition going of catching the fish in the ocean, you know? That's most common sense. If I want to go get a fish, I'm going to go fish for it. I'm not going to go into the fish farm pen and pick one up with gloves, you know, and expect me to eat that. No. All I'm asking, uh, we're asking is for the general public, those who are opposed to it, don't just believe what the environmentalists say. Go out and search for yourself. You ever go down to Vancouver Island, go stop by and see them. And ask them, ask them if you can go to a site, look for yourself, examine, understand it, ask questions. 